Picking the right tank in every given game can be incredibly hard sometimes. Sometimes you have supports that just won't heal you, DPS that constantly flank, and as a tank, you feel like your impact on the game is marginal at best. The fact of the matter is, you have to adapt, take the matters into your own hands, and the best way to do that is by playing the best tank for every situation. If you want to know how to play the best tank for each and every map, team composition, or how to have impact even if you're getting farmed, then this is the video for you. Smash that like button and let's just jump right into it, shall we? So everyone knows it's the job of tank players to create space and help to make it. But what happens if no matter what you do, you're getting killed, you're getting shut down, and you have no idea what to play? So the first example we're going to jump into is when you have low synergy with your other tank. Maybe you're just playing something like Ryan against an enemy Ryan Zarya, but your Zarya is not going in with you, she's not bubbling you, and you don't feel like you can push in actively enough. What do you do? You could have a playstyle change, but maybe that doesn't work out in the long run because you're not being proactive enough. Another option is swapping to something like Hammond, taking the matters into your own hands, playing a character that can create space and doesn't need synergy. There's all kinds of different things, and this is one example of how you adapt to a situation. But in my opinion, the true way to understand the concept in this video is by seeing it firsthand in VOD reviews. So go check out GameLeap.com. We have tons of VOD reviews from the tank perspective of this exact topic. I'll see you there. Another concept that we need to get into is not every tank can hard carry that easily. Something like a Ron can definitely hard carry a game where he's getting ample resources and his team is pushing up with him. But many of you in the comment section has told me, I'm pushing up his run, I'm being proactive, but I get no heals, I get no peel, their Reaper pushes up on me and I just die. If you're playing in the proper proactive strategies on Ryan, what you need to to create space but you're getting shut down and farmed there are other characters that can still carry but need less resources and expect less from your bad teammates let me give you an example we talked about wrecking ball but also roadhog these characters are insanely powerful at getting value bringing pick potential to the table and carrying especially at the lower ranks when you don't want to rely on your team because they're just going to let you down so playing these characters are far better in those scenarios slow resource pick now, of course, if you're playing that Reinhardt and your team is healing you and you're popping off and you're pushing in and your Zara is bubbling loot and all these things, you're going to win the game. But most of the time for ranks like bronze, silver and gold, if you have all these factors, you're going to win no matter what. It's talking about the space in between where you don't get everything you need. Now, let's talk about getting farmed. And I know many of you have gotten farmed before everyone has. You play like the Reinhardt example or the Orisa and there's a Doomfist in your face, a Reaper in your face whatever the thing that you need to understand about tanks is while your team needs to do a lot of things if they can't do it you need to swap it up and play something that will not get punished you need to be able to do as much as you possibly can to prevent yourself from getting farmed so if you're getting w keyed by a reaper swap it up play in a different way or just play a completely different character like i said and this is important to get down and this is a concept that i'm going to reiterate through the whole video is you're not going to be able to easily climb all the way from low rank to high rank playing just Arissa or a character that can't have impact in some scenarios. You need a certain amount of check boxes for those tanks to even feel playable. And if they're not playable, don't be afraid to swap it up. Now let's move on to something that you should do, and this is more positive aspects, is picking tanks that go with your partner. If you're a flexible tank player and your other tank player picks Ryan, you could play Zari or Diva. Help that Ryan take space, eat things like Nade or Bubble the Ryan, all these factors. You play a synergistic duo, and if you look to make that duo happen, I mean, even as a Zarya, even if your Ryan isn't really trying to synergize with you, he's just going to do it automatically. I mean, he's going to swing in, you're going to bubble him, no problem. It's harder the other way around, but what I'm saying is you can choose to pick second. I know a lot of tank players have had luck climbing they know they're flexible they let the other tank pick the character that they want to and then you pick a character right after them and you just force the synergy they pick a winston you pick diva force the synergy you go in with them he picks ryan you pick zara force the synergy he picks arissa you pick hog you break shields and hook his pulls that is how you force the synergy and let's talk about more synergy and this is another thing that's really powerful is some tanks are better at enabling certain dps and supports something like Hammond is pretty bad at enabling things like McCree, things like May on your front line. The problem is you do create space, but it's not in the same way that a Rhine 
pushes forward on the front line does. It's more of a pulling people back and peeling, which doesn't really play into the same play style as McCree and May. So if you want to enable these DPS better, you would probably want to play something like a Reinhardt so that you give them space to operate from and to push up from instead. Understanding what DPS work best with your character is something that's really important to understand and keep in the back of your mind, but you don't always need to hold true to that. As we talked about before, if they're not doing their job, even if you're giving them the proper resources, then you need to swap it up and try to find value regardless of what they bring to the table. Now, let's talk about some other examples of this concept in general is with like something like a Hammond. Hammond's extremely good with things like Tracer, things like Widowmaker, things like Genji, because you're making space and you have DPS that can push up to the space you're creating and they can do it safely without being under fire. They don't have to systematically walk up with really stagnant positioning and then they can also follow up on a lot of the value that you create to get picks because it's one thing to just create space for the character it's another thing to transfer that space creation into straight up picks which is something like a slam into a widow headshot a slam into a dash these are all things that can transition incredibly easily now let's move on to tanks that are strong and weak on certain maps so based on a map's architecture some tanks are incredibly powerful on a map and some characters are not and there's certain playstyle differences that I want to get down, ways you could force through a certain take over another. So the first thing is maps that have high ground advantage, big time. Something like Nubani, if you're attacking against a defensive team. If you play something like Rhine, right, and you're pushing the high ground, the only way that that is going to work is if you give characters like McCree and Soldier LOS on the enemy to pressure them and force them down. But if your DPS is something like Farah and something like Tracer, playing Rhine is actually completely useless because you're not going to be able to take the fight to the enemy. You could touch point, but then the enemy have high ground advantage. You can't route to the high ground because you're not going to do anything just standing there. You can't do any damage to the enemy playing something like monkey or a wrecking ball instead is phenomenally better than playing something like reinhardt because while your tracer and your far are doing damage from long range or going in at the enemy you can dive in and create space push in don't full commit but drop your bubble push the enemy back put some pressure on them force them to relocate all these factors so now on the flip side there are maps where mobility is inherently not as strong maps that don't have any sort of high ground advantage advantage if you think of something like Junkertown really long map sight lines it's hard to justify moving from one natural cover to the next without a shield very hard that's the point of a main tank something like Ryan or Arissa you want your characters to be able to move from one natural cover to the next really flawlessly without being under fire a monkey can't do that that well and a wrecking ball can't do that at all very important things to keep in mind if you're trying to enable your team the best if you really want the win that is what you need to think about now moving on to the next aspect certain maps have other specific things that are hyper specific to characters think a boot map think something like well many tanks can actually boop off characters but some do better something like Arissa pool very powerful in a map like well now on Elias lighthouse Winston's extremely powerful and so is wrecking ball because the map allows for you to get these insane boot plays in the same way that Lucio is more powerful on those maps this is something that you can understand is a small interaction like that can all of a sudden make Winston the proper choice and the better choice because you have more potential to have these high impact boot plays than something like Reinhardt who doesn't really get to fight like that and characters like Ryan and Arissa in in general are more one-dimensional than something like diva something like winston on maps that are 2 cp or payload the geometry of the map is pushing straight forward in a line but on maps like koth where enemies can come from is really dynamic and it's hard to just face one direction it makes reinhardt's automatically reinhardt's and arissa automatically worse than something like monkey or diva slightly now that doesn't mean you can't play them on the map i'm just saying that you get marks in the other character's favor the other tank's favor and that's really ultimately what decides what you should play your basic skill level and what is better or worse on different maps the idea that you have to play one tank and play it on every single map is 100 percent not true now we're going to move on to the last topic of this video and it's when you need to play a tank that does a very specific job and you can swap to it and do that job. So let's say your Ana is getting doped by a Doomfist over and over again. And she's saying, McCree, peel for me or come back, help me. And the McCree's just not. He's going on flanks. He's doing whatever. You can decide to either play in a way that helps that Ana or play a character that helps that Ana. Think playing something like Roadhog, just waiting for the Doom, making sure that your Ana does not die by the Doom. 
you're basically swapping it up to fulfill a specific task a specific role and that is often enough to have a lot of value on the game maybe there's a high ground character that is just dominating your team like a hanzo you just swap to diva you go dm him off burst him down zone him away from the high ground every time he gets up on the high ground you boop him off zone him away you just never give him that good positioning so that he can't dominate your team maybe the enemy has an insane widow that's playing so far back and just being this ultimate harasser she could be a smurf widow or whatever swapping to wrecking ball is insanely powerful against widow because a widow cannot kill a wrecking ball in any way she will lose and she needs pocket if she wants to survive and oftentimes she'll still die i mean i've shut down smurf widows widows that are way better than me just by playing wrecking ball and just basically just following her around the map i mean it's really powerful there's some tanks that do jobs really well and that's something else is in my opinion especially at the lower ranks if you need to climb you're having trouble climbing try and play a tank that can actually help your allies especially if you already have a main tank you can easily do this but there are other scenarios where you just think to enable your allies as you rank up but then also like i said before understand when if your team isn't enabling you or doing things that help you specifically even if you think you're playing correctly you can always swap it up play a character that has more hard care potential we talked about a lot of diff different examples but there's frankly tons of different characters that can hard carry depending on the situation and i think i broke them down in this video for you here to help you pick the best tank no matter what situation you come across but to understand the dynamics of tanking in general and apply it to an actual game is a completely different matter so if you want to master that extremely fast definitely go check out gameleap.com we have in-depth grandmaster guides breaking down tank gameplay all the decision making involved so do yourself a favor and go check it out you won't regret it anyways that's all i have for you today any questions please leave them in the comments down below and if you have any video ideas or anything that you want to see please let me know and i can get right on it that's all i have for you today i'm coach mills and until next time